One of the biggest challenges personally for me was to get the drum beat I was looking for when recording. That's why I decided to buy electronic drums. This video will explore how to record electronic drums in Logic Pro X. For this video, I will be using the Alesis Nitro Mesh Kit. This is the Alesis Nitro Mesh Kit. Its components include the drum module to the far left, a hi-hat, a crash, a ride cymbal, two toms, a snare, a bass drum, a kick drum, a kick pedal, and a snare pedal. This is the kick pedal. It is very well made and has really good action when you're playing it. This is the snare pedal. This is the Elysees drum module, which is essentially the brains behind the drum kit. In the back it has several inputs and outputs, but the key one is the one on the left there, which will allow you to connect to your computer via USB. This is how you connect the drum kit to your computer. You plug it into the USB port to the back here and then connect it to your computer. Now that you have your drum kit connected to your computer, it's time to create a new track so you can record your drums. You do so by selecting the track drop down list here and selecting new software instrument. Once that's done, Choose drum kit to the left here and select any kit you would like. I'll choose the East Bay kit. Now that we've turned on the Alesis drum module and connected it to the computer and set up a track, it's now time to lay down the recording. In this situation, I'll set up a count in of two bars. I'll grab my drumsticks and lay down a little recording. To do that, all you have to do is press this red button and you'll hear the two bars count in and then you can start playing. Now that I've finished my drum track, I'll hit the stop button. I wouldn't be surprised if you noted the sound quality there. You could definitely hear me hitting the drums and the, and the plastic sound when I hit the cymbals. Typically when you're playing you have a speaker and you won't hear this. And I guarantee you, as you'll see shortly, that it doesn't sound like that at all in Logic Pro X and that you can make a great sound out of that. Okay, so now let's switch over to the Logic Pro X functionality and see what we can do with this. One of the most obvious things that we can look at is changing our drum kit over here to the left. I'll go ahead and change it to the heavy sound and see what that sounds like. You can already hear the improved sound from when I played it live and you can hear that you don't hear any of the clicking sound and the impact on the drums. Another thing I'm going to do is turn this up a little bit here so that we can hear the drums a little bit more loudly. Another very useful thing we can do in Logic Pro X is to create a loop so we can play this track over again and observe the sounds and the changes that we make. In order to do so, click on the loop here and extend it from the start to the end of your track. Now when I play this, it'll continue in a continuous loop. And 
I'm actually going to trim it up a little bit here at the end because there's a little bit of a lag time. And then I'll adjust the loop. The first thing I usually do is to adjust the volume of each individual piece in the kit. To do that, click on this button here and make sure that the control is selected. Down below you can see that there's levels for each different piece in your kit and additional options for compression and effects such as tone and room. And by clicking on these buttons you can turn them on or off. I usually like to crank all of mine up to the maximum level and then if I don't like that I can turn them down from there. I especially make sure to pay attention to my hi-hat because that, sometimes that can be low. I'll crank up my compression a little bit, increase my tone, and increase the room. Now let's take a listen to that and I'll adjust the levels a little bit as it goes. You can see by adjusting those different levels you can greatly modify the sound of your drums. I'm going to go ahead and turn them back up to the levels that I usually keep. Another way to customize the sound of your drum is to switch out pieces of equipment and to adjust levels further. To do so, click on this information button here, and then click on this drum kit link here. Now you have a visual representation of your drums to further customize the sound. So for example, if I wanted to switch out my kick drum here, I can double click on it, and I can s select another drum here and download additional drums even if I wanted to. And to the right here, I have adjustments for tune, dampen, and gain. So if I go ahead and play this and switch around these levels a little bit, we can hear what it sounds like. I think that's a pretty cool option. As you can see here, you can do it with all of the other. Another great option for modifying the sound of your drums is to modify your equalization. In order to do so, click this button here and then click on the EQ down below. I'll move some things around and you can hear how it, it affects the sound of the drums. From those adjustments that I made right there, granted on the fly, you can hear that there's already a deeper and more defined drum sound. The final topic I'd like to discuss is the use of plugins to further adjust the sound. I'll discuss the five most popular plugins that I use when mixing my sounds. To see the plugins, first click on this icon. To select a plugin, click here. The first plugin I'm going to look at is Vintage Graphic EQ. To get to that, I will 
uh, select the e EQ here on the drop down list and go down to the vintage EQ collection and then finally select the vintage graphic EQ stereo option. This is a really nice interface that you can use to, to adjust the sound of your drums and we'll take a listen here. You can hear that this plugin offers another a way to uh, change the sound of your drums in a very nice way and um, is a very easy way to visually see um, uh, a graphical interface and, and adjust them and hear how it affects your sounds. The next great plugin that I like to use is a compressor. It's called Studio FET and the way to get to that is by clicking here going to compressor, hitting stereo, and then selecting the Studio FET option here. I'll play the drum track and we can listen to how it affects the sound. Using, using a compressor is key when creating your drum mix and this is a very powerful tool that I, I like to use to make my drum sounds what I want them to be. Yet another great plugin is the Overdrive plugin which can be selected here. I'll play the drum track and adjust the settings so you can hear how it affects the sound. That isn't particularly mixing well with the other plugins I have at this point, but you can hear how by turning that on and off it will affect your drum sounds in a very dramatic way. Another great plugin is the Enveloper. I'll select that by clicking here and choosing Stereo. And once again, I'll play along the drum track and see how this affects the sound. That plugin really gave these drums some punch and you can see when I turn that on and off again the effect that it has on the overall sound of the drums. The final plugin we'll explore is the expander. I'll select that and see how it impacts the sound of the drums.
By finally t uh, tuning the knobs a little bit, I was able to take away a little bit of the uh, bass that was overwhelming in that mix. That wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it helpful.